Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of Amateur Radio Station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations. At your service, I'm going to talk a little bit about a phenomenon that you don't want to see on an antenna system. Actually, you don't want to see it on any type of antenna system, but the simplest example to use here to illustrate the phenomenon that I'm going to deal with is a half wavelength center fed horizontal dipole antenna center fed with some sort of open wire line like you see here now I remember when I worked at the American Radio Relay League headquarters station W1AW back in the late 1970s up to up until 1979 77 78 79 actually I only worked there during 1977 and part of 78 for those of you who may be historically inclined uh, they had an antenna for 40 meters that looked something like this there were two very tall supports like utility poles I believe they were in fact creosoted utility poles probably about 50 or 60 feet high let's just say 60 feet spaced in such a way that insulators could be placed a few feet from the ends of each one and the resulting antenna would have a length of 66 feet now, I'm pretty sure that was the the length of that antenna I'm pretty sure that it was a half wave center fed 40 meter dipole antenna up about 60 feet fed with a very hefty probably about 600 ohm open wire transmission line it was like homebrew ladder line the, the wires were spaced at a good four to six inches apart and it went down to a transmatch or antenna tuner that was in uh, like a little doghouse or something to, to be shielded from the elements and it sat right on the ground and then coaxial cable I think buried underneath the ground or possibly even a hard line uh, unbalanced transmission line went in to the radio transmitter and this was their alternate 40 meter antenna their actual main antenna was a three element Yagi at 90 feet I remember that one very well because I climbed that tower once in in a, uh, in a in a on a very windy day to do some repairs on that thing and and oh that was a huge massive massive Yagi antenna but this antenna could be used in the event that something went wrong with that Yagi antenna and it was oriented north and south and in Connecticut then it would radiate pretty much towards the west and cover the United States so this was a very well designed 40 meter dipole antenna well, something interesting about that antenna. The people who designed it paid very close attention to this angle right here. 90 degrees, a perfect right angle. This antenna had no other obstructions near it, so the objective was to have this feed line see this antenna in exactly the same way from either conductor of the line so that any radio frequency signals that might radiate from this antenna and strike the line and some of them do you know that this antenna radiates a little bit in every direction except right off the ends so it does radiate at the line and it was important to be sure that the that the radiation that th this line received from the left hand side of the dipole was identical to the radiation that the antenna received from the right hand side if this feed line had come down at some other angle like this or like that then this antenna would see more radiation or pardon me this transmission line would see more radiation from one side of the antenna than from the other side and that would not be 
a good thing. For example, if you had an antenna that was asymmetrical in any way, be it that the feed line might come down like that, or if there was some kind of a, tr a tree near one side of the antenna but not the other, if the antenna was sloped so that one side was nearer to the ground than the other, if there were to arise any circumstance where this line would see something different from here than it did from here in terms of antenna radiation at the line, then that line would have a current in it flowing in the same direction in both conductors of the line. That would tend to unbalance the balanced transmission line because these antenna RF currents are at the same frequency as the RF currents that travel along the line in the first place. In effect, they would, call, they would add together on one side of the line and subtract on the other, and the result would be an unbalance in the balanced line. And the result of that is something that you do not want to see in a system like this, radiation from the line or, in the case of reception, unwanted RF pickup by the line. If you have an ideal arrangement where the line comes away at a right angle from the antenna for at least a quarter of a wavelength, but preferably a half a wavelength or more, if you can manage that, then you have an excellent state of affairs in regards to the likelihood that you will have antenna currents on this line. And that is what these currents are, in fact, called. When you get a current on a transmission line because of improper line design and because it's coming from the antenna in the form of radiation that's picked up by the line, we call those currents antenna currents. or antenna current. That's a bad thing. You don't want that on any kind of line. You don't want it on a coaxial line. You don't want it even on a waveguide. But the most common example used to illustrate how antenna currents work or conspire to make your life difficult is with an open wire line like this. Now that said, it's very hard for anyone to design an antenna like the one that was at W1AW. Uh, the buried coaxial cable was essentially shielded from the antenna, so antenna currents would not flow on it. Antenna currents would not flow on that transmission line because it came away from the antenna at a right angle. So it was the, the, the line is symmetrical, the antenna is symmetrical, and in fact, the entire system is symmetrical. So remember, with an open wire line, symmetry is the goal. Now that said, there are other things that can cause antenna currents on a line besides asymmetry in the system or can increase or decrease the probability of those currents. And in a future video, I'll talk some more about that and perhaps make a whole series of videos about this phenomenon because it leads to one of the biggest bugaboos that bugs the ham radio operator, so-called RF in the shack. If you don't know what that means, I'll bet if you enter it in the phrase search box of your Google search engine, you'll find out what it means. And if you've experienced it or not, you'll know immediately. Stan Jibalisco, signing off for now. 73 from W1GV. So long.